Welcome to the January 2024 um, Acquisition SIG meeting. Um, we have it's the first meeting of the year, and we will. Um, I know a lot of us are getting upgraded to 2305 this week um, if you're a Bywater customer. Um, so I was just kind of curious if people are already on 2305 or if um, or not. Anybody already migrated? Nope. Okay. Marcy is, uh, McKinney is, we were an early adopter. Early adopter. Okay. Um, thoughts, experiences? Um, well, I kind of talked about it this last month, but things broke because we're an early adopter. So as far as EDI broke, oh. other stuff broke, but other than that, I'm probably not a good person. I know there was a lot of cool acquisition stuff, but it's not stuff that I use. So oh. I can't really speak to how wonderful it would be. For non-EDI libraries. Okay. Yeah. So one of the big things with a very, very um, uh, old bug number of 8,179 is the receiving multiple order lines at once. So that was that's a huge thing for non-EDI um, libraries or even libraries that have EDI but don't have, they have a couple of vendors like us that, you know, we use um, uh, Amazon and, and um, Bound to Stay Bound, things like that, that don't do EDI. Um, <clears throat> so previously, uh, you'd have to receive one item, uh, go through all the steps of receiving that item, and then you go back and you find the next item and go through all the steps of receiving that one. Now you can select, um, there's little check boxes next to uh, all the items and you can just check the ones that um, you, you want to receive that you just received and then go through that process kind of much quicker. Um, and that will be a huge time saver for people. Um, I did see a ticket about uh, things were only getting received on, on the page that was showing or the screen that was showing. Um, and I failed to look that up, but I don't know what the status of that one, if that's fixed or not. Um, so that might be something just to... Um, be aware of. I'm trying to pull up Bugzilla here a minute. Here's that bug, Rondo. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Oops, maybe not that one. There's two in, in a row. Hold on. Oh. We have this one. Let's see, this one is Joe Basket and Price in list and receiving. Okay, and then the other one is add table settings to one nope. page. They're, they're still missing it. Must be another one. Yeah. Oh, oh like three, five, six, oh, seven. Three, five, six, oh, seven. So there's a whole bunch of them right in a row here. All courtesy of Andrew. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I remembered Andrew was the one that uh, submitted them. Multiple receiving only receives orders visible on the screen. And this is a new status. So that's something to be aware of when you start receiving with the new, um, on 2305, <clears throat> receiving multiple items. So, oops. Um, okay, here we go. Um, last month, we went and kind of did a walkthrough of the um, 
the additional fields for order lines. Um, it adds the option to add additional user defined fields to the order lines in the acquisition module. Um, this fields can be set up as free text or pull down lists driven by authorized values. They can also pull information from the mark record or allow you to edit, create and edit a field in the mark record. So it was very interesting and it was a cool experiment, but Kelly, I'm gonna put you on the spot here and ask why uh, we couldn't think of a use case for it. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, with you talking to lots of libraries and things, if there, if you had a use case for this. It, it's, it's actually one of the things that I, challenges me when I go through these notes is like, who's using this and why? Yeah. They don't say that in the bug, which I feel like you should say like the reason you want to add that. So there is some sort of like, I'm an academic and I need X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But there is absolutely nothing on the bug that says okay. why. Okay. Um, sometimes Katrine does say like why, but she didn't. Okay. Um, would it be something like if you were needing to? I mean, add more accounting information, like if for your red, you know, processor or something that they're looking for. Yeah. Like, so that's, you create the basket right. with a name, but then the PO needs to be added. And therefore you can add that PO once it's been generated from the accounting yeah. office or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was the only thing I could think of is, is some kind of tracking, you know, that, mm -hmm. that you needed to do, um, if you wanted to do certain things. So, um, okay. Um, so, um, we kind of went over all this last, last month, you know, the new enhancements and stuff. Um, one thing one that I, one sec, Rhonda, to go back to that in the, in the blog post that Holly wrote, she talks about bringing in mark information. So if you were looking at what you were ordering by subjects, and you wanted to look at, instead of pulling in the titles and figuring out what subjects you're ordering by titles, her example was pulling in your subjects into the order line. So when you're running a report in the, you know, concerning acquisitions, okay. you could essentially say, you know, I've spent X number of dollars on sci-fi or cooking or religion or. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might that be might. kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm sure we'll, we could get questions like that. <laughs> How much are you spending on whatever? Um, okay, that's that's helpful. Um, one thing, uh, next thing I wanted to do was just see if anybody had specific questions that they wanted to bring up to the entire group. Um, stuff that you've run into, workflows that you're thinking, there's gotta be a better way. Um, I this is Marcy. I does anyone who for the patron suggestion module, I know there's a bug out there that says it's super slow, but yeah. it literally takes two minutes for the page to load. Yeah. Is anyone else experiencing that kind of slowness? Yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, it's like, oh, I got to go to the suggestion page. Oh, I'll I'll click this and go get my tea and come back. Exactly. I mean, it's it's really taking a long time for my selectors because it's kind of a cumbersome process anyways because you're checking availability with vendors and. Yep. Okay. Well, the only thing we did was. Um, reduce the length of time that we keep the purchase suggestions so that yeah. it doesn't have to load quite so much, but yeah. it's, it's still slow. Did you archive them or delete them? We just deleted them. Okay. Okay. 
Um, is there anything else? Questions that people had? Um, if not, I, one, one thing that I wanted to do was ask about topics that people are interested in um, hearing more about, or maybe having a guest speaker come in and share, um, you know, more in-depth information about different topics. And, and I can line those up um, for the next few months or whatever. Um, but, you know, I mean, in general, we could just do something like, okay, we're going to, you know, next month we're going to do, um, since Marcy mentioned it, a suggestion module, you know, we'll just kind of poke around in the suggestion module and see what, um, what everybody does with, with that and how, you know, the different workflows and, you know, try and get some interaction on that, or we could do something related to, you know, how do you um, set up your vendors? Um, you know, would, would you be interested in learning more about the ERM? Um, it's not, I mean, it's a separate module from acquisitions, but they're kind of closely related um, as far as tracking uh, money spent uh, or or digital stuff. Um, and, um, you know, just what what is the process? You know, sometimes um, non-EDI libraries like to see what an, what an EDI library workflow looks like. You know, what does that really buy you? What is it, you know, what, what's the, what are the benefits of, of doing EDI with some of your big vendors? Um, what, um, you know, how do you set up your budgets and how do you um, track different uh, expenditures? You know, maybe we could figure out a way to use this, uh, um, where'd it go? Additional fields for line orders um, and see different ways to do that. Um, any Buddy have things that they're kind of curious about? Maybe it's a part of acquisitions that you don't really use, but you'd like to see what other people are doing or what's possible with um, the different parts of acquisitions. Learn from three things today. Um, I have some acquisitions questions, but they're not COHA specific questions. We are looking at work procedures and something I'm interested in finding out what other libraries are doing is like, we have an ordering schedule, um, but you know, are other libraries putting out there, you should spend, you know, X percent of your budget by such and such, you know, month of the fiscal year. And then, you know, halfway through the year, you should have this much spent or, you know, do they have plans on, on how quickly the money gets spent and how much is left <clears throat> in those later months of the year? And <clears throat> sorry, I all of a sudden got a cough. Mm -hmm. And do they have um, procedures like, say, in picture books? Uh, we're going to tell you you can only select hardcover reinforced bindings, don't buy any paperbacks, or, you know, just what kinds of work rules and procedures are libraries using? And this is not necessarily a COHA question, a larger acquisitions. Mm -hmm. How do other libraries handle their selection and acquisitions, I guess? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do people 
have written policies or written procedures for these things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Barbara, we have a collection development, a, mat a material selection policy that's public facing on the website, but it, it sounds like you're looking more of a procedural thing. Is that correct? Yeah, I can, we have a policy and we, I can do a Google search and find everybody's policy. Yeah. <laughs> but finding you know, like what people are actually doing um, is a lot harder. That's probably something I should write down. We have our practices that we do, but I don't know that I've ever sat down and just written up a selection manual, but that's a really good idea. That's where really we are. Idea. <laughs> that's where we are is wanting to define some of these things. And we've we've grown from like four selectors to, you know, 12 or something. Yeah. And so it's it's just really changed over the years. And when we had our four, I guess everybody knew exactly what we were doing. And and it seems like, you know, the publishing industry has changed a little bit too. And so um, one thing we have trouble with is we have an automated sorter. And if we buy really, really thin books, the sorter yeah. just won't handle that. And so that's where the, you know, should we be saying, look, you, you have to be buying, you know, hardcover books in this section because you're just, if you get this other yeah. stuff, wasting your money, you know, so we're trying to nail down some of those things. Yeah, we've done the opposite because we centralized selection a couple years ago. So now there's only two of them. And so they know what to do and just do it. But it would be good to have that documentation in case we all win the lotto and someone else has to pick up where we left off. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting topic. That's something we, we like Bedford have recently expanded the, especially the nonfiction, um, adult nonfiction collection developers really divided that up more um, to get, give more attention to the collection. Um, <clears throat> but that would be interesting. We have, we have procedures written down, but they seem to um, get outdated um, pretty quickly. Um, so we'd have to go back and look at that again. Okay, that's one idea. Um, anything else from anybody? Kind of the January meeting, so I kind of wanted to get our uh, plan in place and then we can go full steam ahead from, from there. <clears throat> okay, well, what, what I can do then is um, just pick some of these different parts. Are, are people interested in learning more about the ERM? I mean, there's lots of opportunities for, you know, training and stuff like that. You know, I think Monday Minutes has done a couple of things and um, there was stuff at the, the COHA conference. Um, you know, this would be something more, you know, how does ERM connect with uh, the acquisitions module from the, you know, I, I'd be interested in something more from that perspective. Um, do, do people, do you guys um, track like your Libby, Hoopla, Cloud, all that kind of expenditure through Koha or do you have a different, um, you know, spreadsheets or something like that. that you I know. track it in Koha, but we do like fake order, not fake orders, but I enter like order records using fake bibs. Okay. Um, mainly because Cloud Library doesn't invoice for the month until midway through the next month. And 
sometimes my director thinks we haven't spent enough and he goes in and spends and I'm like, no, don't do that. We don't have this money. We're on track. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So, hang on, I'm I had the um, Bywater server up or instance up and it timed out on me. So I okay. hey, have a question. Good sure. morning. This Good is morning. Uh, Victoria from Altadena. Um, we were updated last night and I'm just looking over at the um, option to receive multiple items. Yes. Um, just not quite sure. <laughs> I get it. Uh, can we look at it? Sure. Yeah. So does everybody already have the new version or? No, but what I can do is pull up Bywaters uh, instance, which is updated to let me double check, 230506. So that will have, we'll have that on there and we can go through the process. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, all right. So having done this like once before, <laughs> we will, uh, I will request um, feedback on when I screw it up. So here we go. Um, everybody see the screen uh, by water? Okay. All right. So if we go to acquisitions mm -hmm. and then we go to, um, can I do a blank search? Okay. On my vendor. And, ooh, okay. Um, I guess I got to add something to this basket here real quick. Yeah. Uh, from existing record, uh, what's what's in that system? Um, my all-time favorite. Yep, is that? Oh, okay. Um, each order. That always looks like a cupcake to me instead of a shopping basket, but you know, that's just where my brain goes. Um, Let's see, we got to put the type in here. I think it said visual material. Um, what else do we absolutely have to have? We'll, we'll say it's ordered here. Okay, let's do add item. So we've got one, we'll add it to the one and only fund that we have. And the price we're going to say is $30. And that should do it. <clears throat> so we've got this one thing in our basket. Oh, maybe we should do two since we want to receive multiple things. Um, so yes, thank you. Add to basket. Uh, let's see if there's anything about cats here. Oop. Nope. Um, how about library? Oh, that's I want to go back here. Go back here. Library. Surely there's something in here. Look at all of this good stuff. Okay. Um, ooh. I'm just looking for a book. Uh, here, we'll pick this one. See, that looks like a cupcake. Um, all right, so we will say ordered, and we will, this is a book, and we will add item, and again, we've got that fund, and the 
this book is going to be $25 just so that it's different from the other one. Let's save. All right. Will two be enough? Or should we add a third one? Let's let's do a third one just in case we want to experiment. Um, library seemed like a good read. Pick this one. Order. Pardon me. Let's see what's ordered. And it was also a book. Add uh, fund. And this one is only going to be twenty dollars. Okay. So we've got three things in our basket. <clears throat> Now, I need to go back. We'll, to have, to we'll have to close the basket first, Rhonda. Oops. Okay, let's, let's close this basket. Yes, I want to close it. Okay, so that's closed. And then I can receive shipments. So you put in your invoice number. And shipping costs the one dollar, huh. and that's going to go to the secondary fund because we're keeping track of shipping separately in our little fake library. Um, okay, so now it shows the three things that are available to be received. Um, <clears throat> so we can go in here and do the check boxes. We're gonna receive all three of these because we got all three of them in here. And then um, click receive selected. And we've got three of them. So here they are. So um, now this is where I, do I go in? You're gonna to go to the edit, yeah. Edit. Okay. So we still have to do one individually, like one at a time. Yeah, but they're going to pop up right after each other instead of having mm -hmm. to go back mm -hmm. and forward and, and stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, you, well, you can just do receive here. That will set that all. We're just going to assume this is all right. So, oh. oh. I, I didn't do that right, did I? No, yeah, you could you could hit save or next. So next would be your expedited. Okay. So um, let's do this, receive, and this is all, and then next order, that's mm -hmm. what we want to do. Right. And that brings up this, because you, you sort of do need to go through these like one at a time, because, you know, let's say we actually ordered two um, on this thing, but we only received one. So, you know, we would want to say that we only received one um, and just to make sure that the price is right and, and the funds and all that. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Now mm -hmm. I'm at the end. See, that's why we needed to do three of these. Um, and so I can do save changes at this point and confirm. Yep. And so now we see that these are all received and that there's nothing left to receive. So we go to finish receiving. And now we have this invoice and it is all good. Um, now. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, so what it does, if you do that next order thing, um, it just shows each time, you know, instead of having to go all the way back to the receiving screen, like I did on the mm -hmm. first one, and go back through it, um, mm -hmm. you can just go go through them one at a, you know, you still need yes. to kind of go through them one at a time because there might be things you want to adjust in, mm -hmm. in there and just verify that what you've got there is right. But it's a lot it. quicker. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Now, sometimes when we do stuff like this, um, it brings up questions for people. So I'm going to give you a chance if you have um, uh, 
anything. Well, my question is, though, I'll get an invoice that has things from multiple funds or whatever. So depending on how I search, maybe I haven't gotten everything on my invoice. So I, I, you know, maybe I've received 16 of 20, but there's still four out there somewhere and, and I didn't get them in my original search. So what's my quickest way back to start adding those items I accidentally missed? Does that make sense? Hmm. Yeah. So when, when you say search, um, oh, when we picked our original, like this one, we knew exactly what we were receiving. Yeah. But when I get my invoice in, I may have stuff that's the invoice may have children's materials, adult materials, fiction, nonfiction, may have all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Our internal thing is we assign a sort of a dummy PO in, a, in the call number field. So that's how, kind of how we search. But anyway, you know, maybe I search and I get most of my invoice, but I realize I, I really am missing a couple of items. I'm just wondering if I've cycled through, mm -hmm. what is my quickest way to get back to getting the other things so that I find them and get them into that invoice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've played around with it a little bit, but I, I don't have it as, it doesn't feel routine yet. Yeah. So going to just to the basket of, just going to the vendor itself and going to receive with that, going back to that, this page and hit receive would allow you to see everything from that vendor. And you do have the uh, ability to search. We have nothing here but you do have a search at the top. Right. Um, so that's that's how I would go about it is go okay. back to that vendor because then you could do multiple searches. Search for that, click that. That I want to receive that. Search again, click that. Mm -hmm. Versus if you use the left-hand side of the screen, you are going to go one, you know what I mean? You're, it seems like a lot of steps. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? Has anybody, as we're talking, you know, has something popped into anybody's mind about something that you'd like to see us do a deep dive on? Um, or how many how many people use the late orders thing? I played around with that and it's kind of useful um, for catching some stuff that's gotten you know forgotten about, I guess. Um, you ordered it a few months ago and kind of forgot about it. Um, You could just kind of march through here and see what what uh, what people are doing with different things. Um, and you know, we we could just spend one time just talking about what kinds of reports we run um, for keeping track of what's been spent and, and what hasn't. Okay. Um, I think what I'll what I'll do then is just kind of come up with um, an agenda for the months that are ahead, and then uh, in the email that hopefully I'll remember meeting on Tuesday when you got a Monday holiday. That's really, that sort of bites me sometimes, but um, you know, put it out and so that 
with topics for the next multiple months ahead, three or four months ahead, so that people can see and um, get all excited about talking about some of these different topics. Um, <clears throat> so I've got, I know we haven't really talked about this, but the holds ratio, uh, oops, sorry, no holds ratio. Um, do you, how do you guys use, do you use this? How do you use it? Um, I'm curious. We, we do use this quite a bit um, to keep track of things that are, um, that have lots okay. of holds on. Go ahead. McKinney Marcy. uses it too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bedford uses it, and I have a question on, can that, um, it's always set to um, a ratio of three. Is yep. that a setting somewhere, or is that just always three, and if you want it to, you have to change it? Yeah, I think it's hard-coded. Um, yeah, okay. So that would be a really good ticket for us to put out there, because we don't use three. We, use we don't three. either. Um use a little higher to save us a little more money. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, I mean, that's, I don't know why I never thought about that, but yeah, we, that seems like a pretty straightforward thing to transition from hard coded to make it a system preference where people can set that themselves. Um, so I think once I get off this call, I'll just put in a ticket for that. Um, I filed a bug back in 2019 for this. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no. mm -mm. okay. So what's like, the sounds, bug number? This sounds so familiar. 23208. 23208. Okay. Homework for everyone who's interested um, <laughs> is to go find 23208 bug and comment on how cool it would be to um, have this feature in Koha. Is that the best way or, and, and you can vote for it, I guess. I don't know how much they pay attention to voting, um, but definitely comment and get some buzz going mm -hmm. is probably the best way to. I agree, commenting on it. Yeah. So does everybody know how to comment on a bug? Does everybody know what Bugzilla is? Do a thumbs up icon if you know what Bugzilla is. All right, we got one. I know Marcy and Barbara know. Okay. All right. I know Jason knows what it is. It's, it's like really Godzilla, cool. but like a bug, right? I'm sorry? It's like Godzilla, but it's a bug. It's a bug, right. Yeah, exactly. a giant bug that terrorizes cities. Yes. Like it's a cockroach. Yes. All about cockroaches. That's what Bugzilla is. Um, I can switch out here uh, to this screen. Welcome to Bugzilla. And we can enter our... And bring this up. Build in, built in holds ratio report. All right, so it's, there's Kelly. Currently in the circulation holds report, circulation hold ratio report um, that is found in the circulation module. Uh, the ratio default is two. Oh. Oh, did um, that change, do you think? I'm yeah, I, I, it's three now. Hmm. It'd be nice to be able to specify what the library would like as default in possible system preference. Okay, so Andrew and Sarah and Barbara have all commented already, but um, so you need to log in get get yourself a login if you don't have one it's real you know doesn't take long it's not a big deal um 
And then you just come in here and add comment. Add comment. There we go. And this big window opens up and then you can do something like Andrew and Sarah did, plus one, which just basically means, yeah, I agree. Um, I fully agree with what Kelly said. Um, <clears throat> you know, Barbara put some um, comment, you know, just kind of express more verbiage to um, include that. But just for the sake of uh, brevity, I'm going to just say plus one here. And then when I do that, and then I come down here, and you can see I'm doing plus one on that one. So, um, yeah, definitely, I, I think that would be just a uh, one less click or one less thing that you need to do when you go look at the holds, holds ratio report page. Um, and there it is. Um, and then you could, you know, for your library, whatever it is that you use, three, four, five, um, two, I don't know. So that would be a nice enhancement. Seems like it would be pretty straightforward to do, too. But why not? Um, back here and then budgets so we can talk about setting up budgets i want this library's budget for collections we don't have that budget so you can see this um and we can go in i'm sure you've all done this kind of stuff and then set up your funds. Um, and, and this one shows an example of a parent fund and a child fund. Um, so you can, uh, the, the child fund is a subdivision of the parent funds. In this case, it doesn't really make sense because there's only one child, um, but you could see. Why can't I do that? Um, I do this so rarely that, oh, okay. I can do here, add sub fund. Oh, it's locked. That's why I can't do it. Okay. Well, should be able to unlock it. There you go. Where is it? Update, select. Is it active? Um, restrictions. Statistics. Huh. That seems like the place where it would be. Yeah. Oh, right here, there, okay. There it is, unlock, all right. Now, if I go in here and go here and say add sub fund, then the code would be, I'm just gonna be really original. Oh, and then, Call it child fund. Uh, the amount. Oh shoot. Um, I'm just going to say ten dollars because it's going to scream at me if I go over the other the total. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay. So what you have to be able to do. See, this is a thousand dollars starting to, and I didn't remember how much fund one dash underscore. Two had in it, but these two numbers here have to total something equal to or less than the parent fund. So I just 
pick $10 because I didn't want it to yell at me because I couldn't remember how much this was. Um, so then you can, this is kind of how we um, divide up between our collection developers is set up separate funds for, you know, the, the uh, junior fiction, you know, will have a fund under the kids and then there's the junior nonfiction, and, you know, different things like that. So um, it'd be interesting to see how different people divide up their their funds just to make it work. I, I will set up the parent fund to court the names coordinate with the city fund that we're taking the money out of. And then we subdivide for our own personal information with child funds underneath that. Um, any other um, thoughts, curious? Rhonda, something I'd be interested in seeing is maybe um, usage of the acquisitions module in a multi-branch system, like if there's somebody out there using it effectively that way, because okay. um, we've never we've never even tried because <laughs> okay. we always felt like it was going to be more work than uh, my little libraries could handle. So if there's like somewhere out there in acquisitions land where they're using it effectively, I'd, I'd like to see that. Especially with the the upcoming change where purchase suggestions can place holds, like yes. that yes. linked together, I'd I'd like to be able to use that. But right now, I know we we can't because we don't really have it set up. Okay, so do your libraries use even the purchase suggestion part of it? Or? Purchase suggestions is all we use, all so we use. we don't. But it looks like we would have to go through and like um place like set up the whole order thing to link that to a hold. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to see examples if, if they're out there. Okay. Um, I can put feelers out and see if uh, somebody's using it. So just a, a multi-library system that uses acquisitions. Yeah. Successfully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll put some feelers out and um, Kelly, if you can poke some people uh, mm -hmm. on your team and just see. There's a there's a big push. Am I muted? Yeah. Um, there's a big push for acquisitions to be added to library groups. So okay. um, that would allow for that individual individuality to occur because right now there's a lot to be desired with multi-library branches, like multi-libraries using acquisitions just from a viewing of people, everyone's stuff and having that wow. distinction. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. But if I can think of anyone using it, I'll, I'll let you know, Rhonda. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting because, yeah, like, um, you know, we're, we're a single branch library. Um, Marcy, you've got two locations, um, but that's not a... Yeah, we do have two locations, but I don't have like separate budget lines for yeah. each branch, so it... Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was about to say, is I don't think that's quite the same. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because with with uh, consortiums, each individual library is going to do their own light ordering and all that kind of stuff. Um, versus, yeah, as as I was talking, I remembered you said you centralized all your ordering, um, so that would be different than than a consortium. Okay. Um. I. Unless, does anybody else have anything else? Um, otherwise, I think we will call it a wrap. Okay. Um, I hope everyone who is in under this 
front or whatever that's coming through and making all of us cold. Um, I hope you all stay warm and we will see you. Oops, forgot to write down next meeting. 20th, February 20th is our next meeting at the same time, same link. And we will see you, um, see you then. Sharing. Thanks, Rhonda. All right, we'll see you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Yep. See you later. <laughs>